It's this like, brown. <laughs> I'm going to call it brown. Hey, everybody. Today we are analyzing the Loki soundtrack. Um, we're going to start with episode one, and I thought it might be fun to just go along uh, the process with you all rather than wait for it to be over to do it. So we're just going to go episode by episode. If you haven't seen my cover of uh, the theme, go check that out. There's a link in the description. But uh, other than that, you don't have to be a music theory nerd to enjoy this. I will take you along the way. You might have to be a Marvel nerd, though, so I hope you are if you're watching this. This is Natalie Holt Appreciation Month. She's the composer of this awesome score and we're going to break it down we're going to analyze the light motifs um to get you all up to speed uh i have done uh breakdowns of most of the avengers movies other than endgame if enough of you uh, like this video and comment below then i promise i will do an endgame analysis as well uh but basically what we're looking for uh they're called light motifs it's uh, a musical thing directly relating to something that's on screen so maybe that's a melody sure but it could be an instrument or an instrumentation or a chord progression and it relates to something actually on screen but that could be a character for sure we have like you know the iron man theme but uh it could also be an emotion it could be you know like um uh depression or uh anger or love right those can all have themes um it can be an object the infinity stones have uh, a theme in the MCU. Whether you knew it or not, uh, it goes like this. So, uh, uh, written by Alan Silvestri, right? So if you heard that theme, if you knew to listen for it, uh, it would mean that we're talking about the Infinity Stones or the Infinity Stones are um, what we should be focusing on. Even if they're not in the scene themselves, they are uh, the driving force of that scene. And that's what's so cool about these breakdowns is we actually get a little bit more insight than uh, what we would if we just watched the show without listening to it. Another thing to note, the whole series hasn't come out yet. And in order to uh, decide what musical thing means something on screen, we have to see it a bunch of times. And so we won't actually know for sure if my deductions are right until we see the rest of the series. But that said, uh, the really nice thing about the first episode of a series like this is we are going to be introduced to a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to be introduced to new characters and new places and new things. And any composer who writes a melody or a leitmotif for a character or a place uh, is probably going to use it in the introduction of that thing. So while we're not really sure yet, we're going to have to see more examples as the episodes are released, um, it's it's a pretty good idea of like, okay, the first time we see this character, what do we hear in the soundtrack? It's probably something uh, that we should be listening for. So uh, Natalie Holt, Appreciation Month, we love you. We love this soundtrack. I hope you don't hate us analyzing it uh, this detailed, but you better get used to it because the music's great. So let's dive into episode one. We start back in 2012. We hear the uh, Alan Silvestri Avengers motif, which is obviously the... Uh, Now, we're going to bounce around a bunch in this because I want you to hear the themes next to each other rather than um, the way they played out in chronological order. So uh, we're going to jump ahead to when Loki is seeing um, the replay um, with Mobius of uh, the 2012 Avengers events. So what is this baseline? Maybe it's just a, a you know random uh, music in the background to establish this new technology we've never seen. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it means something. Yeah, maybe it's. Uh... Okay, so uh, listen for some stuff. These are the easy ones. Next up, we have the tesseract, or maybe the Infinity Stones as a whole. I'm not totally sure with that yet, but. Um, it's not, a, it's not a theme, it's an instrumentation. I believe it's a bass bow on Kratales, um, but it's this high-pitched squeal. What's that? <sighs> 
And then that last time you, you see when he realizes this is useless in this new realm outside of time and space, uh, it fades away. Uh, and we, we stop having that kind of um, mystic quality to this, and it's just an object. It's the Tesseract. Be very careful with it. Sounds dark. Next, we have the uh, this main chord progression, part of the main theme that we see over the Marvel sequence. We see it in the end uh, credits, and I don't know what it means yet, so uh, comment below if you have any ideas. It's a chord progression. It's not uh, a melody specifically. So uh, G sharp... <laughs> And then, oh, it's actually G-sharp over C. I guess B-sharp if you want to be like that. And then C-sharp minor. Then it goes to A. And then uh, G-sharp over D-sharp. And then the same chords, but with a different bass line. And then, so the whole thing goes like this. We also heard a theremin. Just trust me. On this, I believe the theremin represents the timekeepers themselves, uh, the entities that we haven't really met yet. We've seen statues of them. Um, I just, just take a stab with me, and let's just pretend that I'm right about that right off the bat. Uh, I think it'll make it a lot better. So anytime you hear a theremin, think timekeepers. Now, in the main theme, which once again you can watch my cover of, uh, there's another uh, melody that kind of goes out, this ostinato thing. Um, and my guess is that it is Loki's theme proper, like Loki in control. Guilty. Of this. Obviously, it doesn't go well for him, but it's setting it up like, okay, we're in Loki's shoes at this point. He's in control, and yes, and we hear the theme. And we also hear it. This is what's so cool about a leitmotif. You can now take that and change it and distort it and change the meaning of it. And so we hear it actually a little bit earlier um, when Loki is definitely not in control, and it's like really like gritty and distorted. All right, this next one might be a stretch, uh, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. This I'm calling the prisoner theme. So far it's just Loki, so it could be a little more specific for now. Uh, it sounds like this. <laughs> Pretty simple, but every time we hear it, Loki is in shackles and being like dragged around. So uh, I think we can say this is the Loki prisoner theme. Hand over the case, Stark. Hand it over. You're making a big mistake. Hello, ma'am. Love, this is evidence. All right, we got another stretch for you. <laughs> they are all kind of a stretch at the beginning because we don't know yet. Uh, this I'm calling the conflict between Loki and the TVA hunters. to be a stand 
standard sequence violation. I, I beg your pardon. On behalf of the Time Variance Authority, I you're coming with us. I'm sorry, who's us? <laughs> it's been a very long day. Mischievous camp. What do you think? I don't know. It's B-15's entrance, and it's such a big moment, but then also it's Loki breaking out. And so it's like the opposite of that in a way, you know? So the only connective tissue here is that it's Loki and the TVA hunters kind of like in a conflict. It might just be a melody, you know? That's the thing with this. Maybe it doesn't mean anything. But keep an eye out. Keep an ear out for that one. All right, this next one is super easy for me because it is so obvious. It is all throughout this episode. I'll play many, many examples of it, but uh, this is the TVA theme proper. Sounds like this. Pretty simple, but man, Natalie Holt Appreciation Month. Uh, she does really, really fun stuff with it. Makes it really quirky when it's supposed to be kind of fun. Makes it sinister when it's supposed to be sinister. Makes it, you know, a little bit complicated when you're not really sure. Like, man. Uh, so here's all the examples I could find of the TVA theme. What is this place? You're making it. Please sign the verify. Thank you for your confirmation. Please move through. something you want to see. Laufison, variant L-1130, a.k.a. Loki Lauf... Are we hurting people? Making them feel small? Hey, I know you. You're that criminal with the blue box. Oh. Oh. What's your name? Casey. Give me the Tesseract or I'll gut you like a fish, Casey. What's a fish? Apply death, Casey. Violent, painful death. Okay, here. Yeah. Okay, I comply. I comply. I comply. Jeez. Ooh. All right. This next one is such a gorgeous melody. I, I Easily my favorite in the whole series so far. Um... It is, as far as I can tell, awe and wonder, the theme for, for those kinds of emotions, um, of the power of the timekeepers in general. Um, the first time we hear it, it's when Loki sees like the compound of this like massive, massive place. And it's like, I thought you said magic doesn't exist here. He's like, yeah, it doesn't. Um, and the second time is when he sees that the Infinity Stones are, are worthless here. You know, the greatest power in the universe means nothing. Uh, and it's this gorgeous melody. It sounds like this. Beautiful as that. Okay, take a look. Have a look. Home sweet home. I thought there was no magic here. There isn't. It 
it is, and unfortunately, so is all the paperwork. Good tinder for your fire, though. Come on. Next up, uh, this one could go a few different ways. I'm calling it the sacred timeline theme. That might not really be right, but uh, we hear it every time Loki is looking at uh, the video of his other life, you know, the life he would have lived if he didn't uh, jump out of the sacred timeline. So uh, it's really, really wistful because we're here, we're seeing his mom die and all this stuff. So um, it sounds kind of like this. It just kind of plays around those kind of notes. So it's more of like a mode, uh, but we hear it both times. So it definitely is, you know, meaningful of this kind of like him looking at the life he would have lived. Oh, and be on the lookout for that TVA theme already coming back uh, in the middle of this. You're not. <laughs> You're always so perceptive about everyone but yourself. And then the Dark Elves attack the palace and you think you send them to Thor. Where do you have her? Where is she? You lead them right to her. I love you, my sons. Remember this place. Home. Okay, now we're gonna dive into this theremin business. Uh, by the way, Charlie Draper played the theremin on this, the lovely and talented Go check him out. Amazing stuff. Like, we don't have this whole soundtrack without Charlie. First, before we get into that, uh, this is going into where we meet uh, Miss Minutes. And I love diegetic music. Diegetic music is where uh, the music in the soundtrack is actually being played in the scene. So the characters themselves would have been hearing the music. Uh, there's a great scene in Elf where you hear this like jazz tune playing in the soundtrack and all of a sudden they go into a shopping mall and it switches to like the tinny speakers of the mall. And now, you know, the characters would have heard this song as well. It's just the most beautiful, like, cohesion of music and cinema. I love diegetic music. I believe all, most, if not all, of the music in the Guardians movies is all diegetic. That's why they have, like, the cassette tape and the MP3 player. Like, the characters are all listening to the music along with us. Sometimes they'll sing along or dance. It's amazing. I love diegetic music. And we have a little bit of it uh, while Loki is going through this uh, line and, you know, take a ticket scene. Um, but it's a little bit too quiet and in the background. So until we get a released actual soundtrack, if this is on it, I can't really hear what is going on. But I would I would imagine there's some important stuff in the music here, even though it is diegetic and in the background. All right, I'm just gonna play a few clips and uh, explain what I think it means. So here's the first one. It's my job to catch you up before you stand trial for your crimes. So let's not- So that one we hear, woo, this theremin, uh, when she says specifically, for your crimes. Who decides if it's a crime? The timekeepers. Settle in, sharpen your pencils, and check this out. You're, go you're on the ride with me. She says, sharpen your pencils right when we hear a theremin, which we're saying represents the timekeepers. And we're looking at Loki. We're not looking at her. We're not looking at the timekeepers. Loki, she says, sharpen your pencils, and there's a theremin playing. So I'm going to 
take a stab and say that Loki, known for using sharp little knives, uh, might stab some of these timekeepers. Settle in, sharpen your pencils, and check this out. If he uses a pencil, if he uses a pencil to do it, then this is like the best little like flash forward. All knowing timekeepers emerged, bringing peace by reorganizing the multiverse into a single timeline, the sacred timeline. Now. That was a theremin playing our main uh, chord progression uh, with this melody. Right? And that's all being played on the theremin. So maybe that chord progression is just representing the, the timekeepers. I'm just not totally sure yet. Uh, but the theremin playing this melody, the first time the timekeepers are actually on screen, even if it's a cartoon, uh, that's significant. I love this whole sequence because it's taking us to this, like, I don't know, 50s kind of style um, Americana you know, Jetsons, whatever it is, uh, uh, thing. And we have the strings doing something that is very period specific, but then there's this theremin thrown in there that like should not be there. Um, and by the end of the video, it's like getting a little bit closer to what you would hear with less theremin and just like strings doing a trill. But if you listen really, really closely to the end, there's this big sweep of the theremin going along with this string. See if you can pick it up. Four. Oh. Always. Okay, now the fun part. We get to put the pieces together and uh, actually tell more of a story than we get without them. Um, so in the scene where Loki is watching the death of you know himself in the sacred timeline, we hear a theremin, right? And so why would we hear a theremin here? The timekeepers, what, what role do they have to play in that scene? Well, the, he's basically watching this and going, the timekeepers were like totally cool with me just dying, right? What's that all about, right? And so now hearing that theremin makes you think like, like this was part of your plan? Me just dying like that, you know? So uh, his like kind of anger and like resentment and kind of like joy at like, oh, I'm going to take these guys down um, makes a lot more sense when you hear that theremin and think like, oh, that's what he's thinking about right now. Not his death. Because he's like, I got out of that. I'm cool. But he's like, this was all part of their plan? Mm -mm, not part of my plan. Okay, I just want to talk quickly about heists and Latin percussion. I don't know why they're like so happy together, but they are like like fun heists. Not we're gonna kill people heists. Like we're gonna like steal a gem and nobody's gonna get hurt heists. Um, Latin percussion all over. And so we have this this scene where he's looking back at this scene that we've never seen uh, from the seventies of Loki like doing a, a big robbery, right? And it's not seventies style music. We hear this like. Latin percussion and then, right? What is that all about? Well, first of all, maybe this is stretched. Let me know in the comments. Uh, the Loki theme in this key would be, okay, and instead it's <laughs> like, is that maybe? I don't know. Is it a stretch? I think, I think if we hear this interval like twice in a row, I think we can start to be like. Meh. That's Loki. Uh, but more importantly, we have this Latin percussion. So see how that like doesn't really fit with what we're starting to see and why it like sets it up as like a fun experience, even though it's a heist, like Loki's doing something bad. It's like a really fun version of it. And uh, just like if be mindful of that, like if the music is setting up something like this, we're going on a little bit of a ride. Bourbon and soda. Thank you. Absolutely. Is there anything else I can do for you, sir? I suppose we'll find out, won't we? And we have this at the very beginning um, in the time heist from Endgame that we see right at the top. There's a bunch of Latin percussion in that, too. Hmm, is there anything else that we might know that would be Latin percussion and heists? Okay. I was at a wine tasting with my cousin Ernesto. 
breakfast was mainly reds, and you know I don't like reds, man, you know, but there was a rosé that saved the day, it was delightful. And he tells me about this girl, Emily, that we used to kick it with. It was actually the first pair of boobs that I ever touched. It's the wrong details. It's the wrong, it has nothing to do with the story. <laughs> you know, like, it, it definitely cohesifies this whole thing, like, heist, Latin percussion. I don't know, just, like, uh, keep an ear out for that one as well. Uh, but going back to his heist on the plane, there's a part of it that has a theremin snuck in again. Like, why are the timekeepers here? Like, they have nothing to do with that. But again, and they even talk about it, like, oh, no, no, this one was cool with them, you know? There's no, like, moral code here. Uh, and it just makes you think about it. And, they, and again, they talk about that. Where was the TVA when I was meddling with these affairs of men? Well, we were right there with you, just surfing that sacred timeline. <laughs> Okay, this is a cool one. This is uh, Mobius. Mobius M. Mobius, the worst <laughs> character name of all time. Um, has not a theme, but uh, an instrumentation again. Uh, and it's like this, I'm going to call it a steel guitar. I don't actually know what it is. Apologies. But it's this like, brown. <laughs> I'm going to call it brown. Uh, like a... Uh, it feels like a 70s cop show. I don't know. Uh, but there's a bunch of examples of it, and it's it's actually really clear that that is what this is, uh, at least to me at this point. So, um, yeah, listen out for that, and that's, that's, that's our Mobius M. Mobius. Approach the bench. Told you time moves. So definitely be listening out for that sound uh, to represent Mobius, especially with these light motifs. If they're not on screen, if they are on screen, like yeah, okay, there they are. If they're not on screen, then you should be like, okay, is that person actually in control of the situation? Is the character on screen thinking about that person? Is that person in danger? Whatever it is, right? Um, and in his introduction, so we're in 1549 or whatever in France, uh, and we hear this instrument kind of being plucked away it's not as aggressive as we hear it later um, but with a pipe organ and that's really important because we're in the 1500s in France and there's a pipe organ we're in a cathedral makes total sense and so this is one of the spots where Natalie is going to totally like set the scene both time and place put us in a cathedral in France in the 1500s um, with this pipe organ uh, so that's going to be really cool and I'd imagine we're gonna get to play with that a ton throughout the series since we're popping around to different times and places The hunter and his Minutemen responded to a routine Nexus event. It appears that when they arrived, somebody got the jump on them. You think? It's him. C'est blue. C'est blue now. C'est quoi? So we just heard this, uh, what was it? Like that kind of uh, sound from the strings there. That's going to be the mode of the main variant Loki, the main villain that we're setting up here. Um, and by that I mean it's like, it's basically these specific notes, like, uh, but maybe not in that order necessarily. I mean, we haven't seen them yet in the show, so they're not gonna play the whole theme because they actually haven't been introduced. We're just saying like, like who did this? Oh, it was this like mysterious figure. And so we just play a couple notes from it that pull from it, but it's not the main theme yet. Um, and then the other thing is, the instrument. So it's not just the melody, it's this kind of gnarly, old, creepy, witchy violin. Um, so when we hear this mode, especially that major seven to one, um, that like harmonic minor vibe, uh, that is going to trigger you in. And then if it's on a violin, like, <laughs> main variant Loki is close. So listen for that mode a little bit, and then I'll set up the main theme when they're actually introduced. Don't worry, that devil's afraid of him. All right, 
So here we are. This is the end of the first episode, and we finally get our like true villain. Even though we also have the Timekeepers, which are kind of villains, we have Loki, who's like also a villain. Um, so everybody's a villain. That's kind of fun. But here we are. The reason for uh, this whole series is this variant Loki, and we get the full theme, and it sounds like this. Right. So there's that. There's that mode again, but specifically. Those are, that's, that's the melody. And it happens a bunch of times uh, every time we see this cloaked character. Um, and it's very spooky and it's played on a violin. episode one of Loki. Make sure you comment, subscribe, like, feed the algorithm so more people can uh, find this video and we can enjoy it together uh, and maybe have some fun conversations in the comments of what these all mean. From here, uh, I will get episode two out uh, as fast as I can. Um, you know, it's already out in my world, so I'll turn that around fast. And then from there, uh, I'll just try to turn them around as fast as I can uh, after the episodes come out and we can, uh, you know, watch and listen together and see if we can find some uh, more themes. Uh, again, thank you to Natalie Holt. Natalie Holt Appreciation Month. This score is super fun to dig into. Uh, I had a, a lot of fun doing it. And uh, yeah, thank you all. Thank you to the Patreon donors making all these videos possible. And I'll see you all real soon.